hello and welcome to this week's video. This week I'm reviewing a car. Uh, the car in question is my car. It's a BMW M140i Shadow Edition. So I've had this car just over a year now. I've uh, done about six and a half thousand miles so I thought it would be good to do a sort of long-term review of it, tell you the good and the negative things about this car. So firstly let's get the boring stuff out of the way, so the practicality of this car. It's a five door hatchback, uh, so nice and practical, quite spacious for this sort of class and this sort of size car. The boot's a decent size, uh, previous to this car I had a Golf R and the boot on this is actually slightly larger. Um, uh, like I say, a pretty practical car, everything's put together nicely. Quality is really good. So yeah, so using this as my sort of daily drive, my everyday car, and it's done absolutely everything you can sort of expect. Um, so nothing different from any five door hatchback. The only thing I'd say is that the back seats aren't the largest, there's not the most leg room. Uh, it's not an issue for me really, because it's only occasionally my children that go in it, they're only six and eight. Um, uh, in fact, uh, there is one thing there that fitting a sort of booster or a child seat, then they're quite sculpted of the back seats, so it's a, it's a bit of a pain actually. When the car seats are in there, then actually getting the seat belts plugged in because they're quite close in it is a bit of a pain. So, um, some cars that are a lot smaller, so had a VW up and the car seats in that because the rear seat is completely flat then that was way easier for children's car seats than this so just something to be aware of. As far as the looks are concerned with this car um, uh, the 1 Series has never been a great looking car in my opinion um, uh, these later ones do look a lot better they change the shape of the rear lights things like that um, uh, I don't personally think it's ever going to win any beauty contests, it, it is what it is, it's got quite a long body, quite a stumpy back end, um, but it's a fairly good looking car. The differentiators between this 140i, um, this is the shadow edition that I've got, it's an estral blue with the oyster leather interior. Um, which I thought was a great colour combination, otherwise I wouldn't have got it obviously. Um, but yeah, the, the, for me one of the problems is it's not special looking. Um, uh, you can have a sort of 1.6 diesel with this shadow edition pack now uh, and it looks pretty much the same. Uh, the only giveaway really are the sort of two beefy exhausts on this. Um, but yeah, so looks wise, I don't think it's the strongest point. So as far as comfort's concerned, then uh, mixed bag here, really. So one of my biggest gripes with the car is the suspension. The suspension's rock hard. Um, it's not so bad on a road like this, that's sort of fairly quick A road. But if you get it on a B road, and even this you can sort of, you can see I'm jiggling about a bit now, um, the suspension's so hard you feel every single bump and yes it's a performance car etc etc but it's the worst riding performance car I've ever had. Um, as I said earlier, previous to this I had a Golf R. Um, uh, that had amazing suspension so it went round corners like it was on rails but it was still a nice ride. Where this is, yes it handles well, but the ride is shocking. So apparently something that does address this comfort problem and the suspension, um, uh, something I didn't realise till after I got the car, is that you can get the adaptive suspension. Um, so that means that you can put in different modes of comfort, sport, etc. Um, and with that apparently it makes it a lot, lot better. Performance wise, this car is amazing. So the 0-60 is something like four and a half seconds. Um, uh, 
about 340 horsepower but it's the torque it's 500 newton meters of torque and this is a rear wheel drive only it's not four wheel drive um, so getting that power down is just interesting uh, so as soon as the temperature is low it struggles um, but I'll quickly show you a sort of blast and you'll only get a slight impression of the sort of speed um, and noise but let's try that I've got the manual gearbox um, uh, when I was deciding on this car I thought you're not going to be able to buy a rear wheel drive powerful manual sports car uh, in a few years time so let's get that while you can I know the sort of DSG's are super good now um, and slightly quicker but I love a manual gearbox but yeah so talking of sort of gearbox doesn't matter what gear you're in there's so much torque in this car then it will just pull just easily it's sort of effortless power um, the other thing the car has as you may have just heard then it's got an auto blipper on sort of downshifts as well um, so that's quite cool even with it being a manual uh, which I think is quite rare Performance-wise, it's staggering. So obviously, in this video, then uh, mainly being on these sort of smaller roads, as you can see, this one's a bit bumpy, um, and you do, if you're really going for it, you do feel like you're sort of hanging on for dear life sometimes. Like I say, it's all down to that rock-hard suspension. Uh, what's it like on motorways and faster roads? Uh, that's where it's really good actually. So if it's nice and quiet. The cabin's really well insulated. Um, uh, so even though I'm in sort of sport mode here, which makes the exhaust loud and all those kinds of things, it's still nice and quiet. So from a specification point of view, um, it's pretty good. It hasn't got some things that you would expect it to have so uh, it does have cruise control but it's not adaptive cruise control um, it has this nice screen but that's not touch screen you have a, a sort of mouse style thing down here to control that it's the BMW iDrive system but it's the latest iDrive system and it does work really well But it's not touch screen. As you'd expect, it's got things like the rear parking sensors again shows you on the screen, that kind of stuff, electric windows all around, all the usual things like that. But like I say, comparing it with the specs of some other things, so again back to my previous car, the Golf R, that did have adaptive cruise. Um, it had parking sensors all around this has only got the rear uh, there's things like that so let's go through some of the positives and negatives of this car so let's do the negatives first and get those out of the way um, number one and this is this is a real biggie for me um, it's the suspension and how hard the ride is so it, it does it sort of spoils the car a bit for me like I say, it may be better with the adaptive suspension. Um, uh, I've not driven a car with that, so I can't comment, but apparently that does make a huge, huge difference. So other negatives, then I struggle a bit. Um, uh, maybe the back seats are a little bit small. Um, like I say, that's not really an issue for me. And then there's just niggly things. Um, and like I say, these really are niggly things. So things like the heating system and controls, 
there's loads of buttons you tend to just stick it on one and leave it um, uh, but unlike most things where you can just sync up your left and right because I'm a bit OCD with things like that then you, you can't do that it's a bit strange so you need to adjust both sides but like I say incredibly niggly so if we do the positive things then the big thing for me is this engine it's an amazing piece of kit um, the whole car is made purely by this engine they are now starting to put this engine in some other BMWs so they do a 340 things like that now um, uh, and it is it's absolutely stunning um, apparently it's incredibly tunable as well so you can get something called the JB4 box and that takes it from like say 340 odd horsepower up to 420 um, uh, and that's with no real changes with just a sort of remap um, so that's a huge huge increase and of course this engine it's a six cylinder engine so it sounds lovely um, uh, it, this has got the stock exhaust you can get an M performance exhaust um, but even this stock exhaust is nice one of the things I said before uh, sort of it's a positive and a negative really is that because the cabin is so sort of soundproof and nice then yes the exhaust sounds good but it sounds way better from outside the car so when you're driving you don't get the sort of benefits it's people outside that see you going past and get the benefits of that sort of nice engine and exhaust no so so that's a bit of a strange one like I say it's a bit of a positive and a negative that positives then uh, let's say just the practicality you can use this as your daily car easily um, it's not like some performance cars that are just unusable as a daily car uh, this certainly is um, like I say it's good on motorways it's good for everything um, it's five doors it's got a decent sized boot so it, it's, it's really practical so it works in that respect the other thing that surprised me, um, sort of practicality wise, is fuel consumption. So I'm averaging around 30 over, like I say, 6,500 miles, and 30 miles per gallon for a car with this sort of power. Um, 10 years ago, you'd be looking at like 15 miles per gallon. Um, uh, so that's not too bad, really. Um, uh, something that is worth noting is insurance, though. So. Like I say, previously had a Golf R, that was a load cheaper to insure than this. Um, whether because of the sort of safety systems that had, so that, like I say, that had adaptive cruise, um, and auto braking, and all these kind of things, and it was four wheel drive, where I'm guessing quite a lot of people are putting these <laughs> rear wheel drive cars backwards through hedges, so maybe that's why the insurance, but it was sort of. 30-40% more than the Golf R, which is just something to be aware of if you're thinking of buying one. Some other quite cool stuff that happens on here, as you can see I've just got the map on, but you've got all sorts of other things. So if I just go into the menu, you can go through, um, pull up all sorts of things, one of the best ones in sports mode. Um, you've got the sort of horsepower and talk so when you accelerate and you can see exactly what's happening there so that's quite good for comedy value really but it's good that they've done things like that rather than just the normal boring stuff summary what do I think of this car um, uh, I think it's a great car it's well built it's practical performance wise it's amazing um, uh, in the wet and in winter you may struggle with it just being rear-wheel drive um, uh, and yeah all that torque then yes yeah, you struggle for grip even in the dry um, but no it's a great car so it's a great car and I do give it a thumbs up 
I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, do give it a like, a comment, subscribe, all that kind of good stuff. If you've got any questions, then do just ask me in the comments. Um, uh, I typically do motorbike reviews, but I do occasionally put some car stuff in there. And I have got some other uh, car videos coming up. I've also got a load of motorbikes um, planned to review as well. So I've got a couple of Kawasaki's, a couple of Hondas, and a couple of Triumphs coming up in the next few weeks. So they're all sort of arranged. Um, I've just been waiting for the weather to break, which it looks like it has done. So this week I'm hoping to be out on two different bikes for reviews. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Like I say, do give us a subscribe, and I'll see you next week.